Hello and welcome to Our Lady of Religious Church in Massapequa Park, New York. I'm Monsignor Jim Losanti and we are together praying the 31st Sunday in Ordinary Time. Let's begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Let's take a moment to consider our lives and to confess our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned. In my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done, what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all of the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us all to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory, Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father. You take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. And so we pray. Let us pray that our lives will always reflect our true faith. God of power and mercy, only with your help can we offer you fitting service and praise. May we always live the faith we profess and trust your promise that one day we shall share eternal life. Grant this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Deuteronomy. Moses spoke to the people, saying, Fear the Lord your God, and keep throughout the days of your lives all his statutes and commandments when I enjoin, which I enjoin on you, and thus have long life. Hear then, Israel, and be careful to observe them, that you may grow and prosper the more in keeping with the promise of the Lord, the God of your fathers, to give you a land flowing with milk and honey. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. Therefore, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Take to heart these words, which I enjoin on you today, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Responsorial Psalm. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. I love you, Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. I love you, Lord, my strength. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation my stronghold. Praise be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. I love you, Lord, my strength. The Lord lives, and blessed be my rock. Extolled be God, my Savior, you who gave me great victories to your king and showed kindness to your anointed. I love you, Lord, my strength. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, the Levitical priests were many because they were prevented by death from remaining in office. But Jesus, because he remains forever, has a priesthood that does not pass away. Therefore, he's always able to save those who approach God through him, since he lives forever, to make intersection for them. It was fitting that we should have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, higher from than the heavens. He has no need, as he did the high priest, to offer sacrifice day after day, first for his own sins and then for those of the people. He did not once for all when he off offered himself. For the law appoints men subject to weakness to be high priest, but the word of the oath, which was taken after the law, appoints a son who has been made perfect forever. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hallelujah. 
unto the word of life. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. My friends, the Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. One of the scribes came to Jesus and asked him, Which is the first of all the commandments? And Jesus replied, The first is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. The scribe said to him, Well said, teacher. You are right in saying, He is one, and there is no other than he. And to love him with all your heart, with all your understanding, with all your strength, and to love your neighbor as yourself is worth more than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered with understanding, he said to him, You are not far from the kingdom of God. And no one dared ask him any more questions. And this is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks for being with us on this 31st Sunday of Ordinary Time. Good to be with you. And uh, just a couple of things about these readings, which are great. Let's go to the Old Testament first, Deuteronomy. I think it's really important for us to, first of all, hear again, the prophet tell us that it's so important that we, when we're looking for our meaning in life, recognize that we can find our meaning very simply in the commands of God. When people say life is so complex, life is so confusing, I'm not sure what God wants of me. I always start with two things when I'm uh, sitting in the office with people. One would be, do you know the Ten Commandments and are you living them? And the other would be, have you read the Beatitudes and are you living them? Because I'm convinced that if we can live God's commands, there's a reason they're in the Bible in both the Old and New Testament, We're going to have a life that's far less complex, far harder to live with complication. In other words, our lives will simplify and we'll live better lives if we simply say, okay, here's what God commands me to do. And I examine my conscience. I look into my heart and I recognize that by and large, I'm living by the commands of Jesus in the Beatitudes and the command of our God in the Ten Commandments. So the first thing we hear is obey the statutes and commands. But then here's the other thing in this passage from Deuteronomy I love so much. The Lord is our God. The Lord alone is our God. Now, what I'm going to suggest is for a lot of us, we know that God is God, but we also have multiple other gods that we worship. What do you mean by worship? That we focus on, that we make important, that we let take control of our lives. Certainly money can be one of those things. Power is another one. Control over other people. Position in life thinking in some ways that if we collect enough things, possessions, those can give our life meaning. We have distractions to loving God and God alone. And they are human things that we make into gods. What is a god? A god is someone I make important over and above everything and everyone else. And if your gods or my gods fall under the category of being not God above, but God in things that we make important in life, then I think this reading is calling us to prioritize and to convince ourselves that we have one God, that God is Lord alone, and that when other things become as important to God, let me give you an example. A lot of people think, well, I did my God thing. I went to Mass on Sunday. I gave that hour to God. But every week has 168 hours in it. If most of the time I spend those 160 hours focusing on things I want, things I need, things I desire, possessions, power, money, influence, food, drink, whatever it may be. And I think somehow or another I have made God my priority by just going to Mass. No. Here's the the rub and the challenge. Can God infiltrate, in the best sense, all the other aspects of our life? Can he be part of what we do every single day, not just one hour a week? Is he the Lord our God? Is he the priority? That's in Deuteronomy what we're called on to do, to give our life True spiritual meaning. Okay, let's go to this uh, second passage, St. Paul's writing to the Hebrews. 
I have to tell you that the church that I came into 44 years ago as a priest has so radically changed. There's been such a mess made of the church. So many complications, so many scandals, so many heartbreaks, so many letdowns. The church I entered 44 years ago as a priest is a very changed church. And you can wonder, because you know the scandals and the heartbreak of the past 44 years, they're not unique to this particular age. If you look through the history of the church, you'll find time and time again, colossal mistakes made by our very human institution. You will find that we have failed many, many times to be holy, to be instruments of the divine. And so what I think we have asked ourselves through the past over 2,000 years of our church history is what I've asked over the 44 years that I've been a priest. How in the world can we get back to where we should be? How can we be the Holy Church of God, the instrument of Jesus that we're supposed to be? When you and I know, I mean, every week when I read newspapers or watch TV, there's some other story of some failure, some human foible of the church. And you wonder, how do we get back to being what we're supposed to be? And I think the answer is in this passage from St. Paul to the Hebrews. He, meaning Jesus, makes intercession for all of us. Those mistakes, those uh, human foibles, those, uh, those things that make the church very human and sometimes very sinful, we can't fix it on our own. We can try. We can make amends. But in the end, we're being promised that Jesus' intercession for us will save the church. And to keep in mind that this priesthood of ours, and that includes deacons and bishops and priests, this priesthood of ours is really not ours, but it's his. And the gates of hell will not prevail against it, he says. This church is his church. And he's going to fix it. He's going to make it better. He's going to uphold it. He's going to be our intercession to save the church. So when we get discouraged, when we want to give up, when we look at the human weakness and sinfulness of the church, realize it will never fail, ultimately, because it's his church. It will never be unable to continue because it is rooted in Christ. We human beings, definitely finite and mistake-prone and sinful, will make our mistakes, but his greatness, his glory, is greater than our human error. And so the church and his priesthood will continue. And finally, let's go to this gospel, this powerful gospel from St. Mark. Um, you know, this gospel is essentially the gospel I chose to read last year at my mom's funeral, because she'd always said to us, if you want to get life right, just be in touch with your God and then take what you learn from God, because God is love, and love other people. And that's essentially what Jesus is saying to the man who questions him. You want to have a life of meaning, you want to have a life that's what it's supposed to be, then focus on your God and then taking the love you exchange with God and pour it out over the people he places in your life. First and foremost, obviously, your family and your friends, but then to others. Let people see the presence of God in you by the fact that we not only love the God above, but that we love the God we're able to see in other people. And let's face it, some people we see the God uh, very, very clearly, and some people less so. But he lives in the hearts and souls of every person. And if we would find meaning in our lives, if we can say every week, I know I love God and I try to serve him by serving his people. And how do I do that? By loving not only those who are easy to love, but trying to love even those who are most difficult to love. It seems so simple, right? Love God and love your neighbor, but it's not that simple. We find obstacles all the time in our process. And one of the things I'm going to ask you to do to make a clearer path to God and to others is once again, going back to Deuteronomy, to purge any other gods that obscure our path to God who is God. So when you make your priority list and when you're checking out what do I most prize in life, if it comes out to be money or power or position or control or those things that are all terribly human, then maybe we need to put those aside and say, let me focus on God and God alone and through that focus to love his people. Final thought would be, how do you love God and love his people? And I want to give an example if I can. You and I have spent over the past two years many times praying for lots of people who are sick, lots of people who have died, 
And that's as it should be. Mass should always be focused on those things. One of the names I have mentioned to you every week for over two years is Joseph Falgiano. And I, I want to mention Joe because, uh, and I have here a picture of Joe with his wonderful wife, Pam. Joe has been battling pancreatic cancer for the past two years. And just a few days, he finally went home to God. I mention this because one of the reasons I love Joe Falgiano and his wife, Pam, is that they got it. They got the purpose and the focus of these readings. They love God so much. You know, when Joe was diagnosed, only in his 50s, with pancreatic cancer, and by the way, he had probably gotten it by doing good because he was a longtime member of NYPD, the New York police, and on 9-11, those who were survivors went down and spent weeks and weeks digging through the ruins of 9-11 so that they might find the remains of their brothers and sisters who had died. And down there, they were breathing toxic fumes that ultimately gave many of them forms of cancer, including Joe. I mention that to you because you might say, if you're Joe, I was doing good, and my reward is this horrible, horrible cancer. Lots of people would have turned from God. Let me tell you, especially when I talk to people who uh, can't find the time to make that one hour a week for Mass, do you know in the past two and a half years, I have never looked out at the 1030 Mass and not seen... Joe and Pam, except for those times when he was in the hospital getting surgery to try to extend his life. My point is that he then took his love for God and he would share it everywhere he went with people he knew and some that he didn't. I remember going to uh, an Italian restaurant with Joe where he quietly, quietly would slip money to some of the people who do the least attractive work in those restaurants. And I said, what are you doing, Joe? And he'd say, first of all, I can't take it with me, so what's the point of money? And also, these guys never get a break. And if somebody can be good to them, why not? He could have turned what was understandable bitterness at his illness, he turned it into service to others, love for others, and a deep and passionate love of God. As he said to me shortly before he passed away, he said, you know, I, I love all the people in my life, and I hate to leave them, and I wish I could stay longer. He'd say, Every morning when I wake up, I'm a little sad because I know I'm one day closer to the end, but I also know I'm going someplace so beautiful, so good, where I will see many people like my mom and dad that I have lost and love, and I'm going to be with God. So I love the people here, but I love the things of heaven. That's exactly the priority we're called on to live. That's what Jesus commands in this gospel. Two things alone must you do. Love your God and love your neighbor as yourself. Seems simple, but not always easy to live. This week, as we celebrate the funeral mass for our friend Joe Falgiano, I want to remember that this man, for me, reflected those commands in action. He loved his God so deeply, no bitterness in his heart, no resentment, no blaming God for things that happened. And then he took his love for God and shared it with others. May we all live very much lives like Joe Falgiano, trying our best to love our God, by loving those around us, those who are easy to love and those who aren't. Joe Falgiano, wonderful friend, good, good, solid man of faith, rest in peace. Please join me now in professing our faith as we say, I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, Born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. Amen. Trusting in the goodness of God, let's offer now our prayers of petition. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. That the church, 
make always keep focused on Christ and on the mission to proclaim God's kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the leaders of the church might make their decisions guided by the Holy Spirit and may bring us to a greater love for Jesus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That all citizens may exercise their duty to vote in places where there is an election this Tuesday, so as to advance the common good and the dignity of human life, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our parish and family members who are ill may enjoy the consolation of the Lord and the presence of their loved ones, especially Michael Shishin, Ina Pichatello, David Ingram, Patrick Stutzman, Barbara Aquaviva, Jill Anna Namalia Brenda, Frank Cassano, Fran and Nello Bonamico, Victorio Insana, Grayson Danielski, Charles Scanio, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, especially Julie Caputo, Joseph A. Fagiano, Jr., Marie Castellano, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intention of this Mass, our faithful departed parishioners who went home to God this year, All Souls Novena, Purgatorio Society, Gloria W. Lima, Marie Bonarigo, Father Tony Heitlin, Isadora Gonzalez Bacani, and Connie Murphy, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. In addition to all the prayers I've mentioned so far, let me add some intentions. I'm praying for Among the Sick, Kathy Bordingo. I want to remember Kathy Sullivan and Carol Dunn and Martha um, McGuire. Pray for Judy Alaco and Stephanie and Howie Handelson. I pray for Deacon Tom and Kathy Forbes and for Vinnie Rasuti and Anthony Lusage. I pray for David Ingram and Howie Pomeranz, as well as Chrissy Rogers and Diane Nagel. I pray for Josephine Romano and Catherine Adams and Deacon Frank Garibaldi. I pray for Emma Brown and Edna Cruz and Adrina Sino. I want to remember Mariah Malari and all of those who serve in the military and the risk they put themselves at. I pray for young Henry as well as Moore Kennedy. I want to pray too among the sick for Angela Sherman, Ursula Vobis. I pray for Frank Laurie, pray for Valerie Di Pasquale and Connie Vanio. I also pray for the continued happy pregnancy for my friend Katie McGrath and I give thanks for the baby born, Eva May, to Kathy Hine. I want to also remember George Murphy and Thanksgiving for his good test results. I pray for Grayson Danieski, um, an eight-year-old who was battling a, a brain tumor. Uh, among the sick, I remember Liz Meehan, as well as the family of Paula LaRocca, and I pray as well for Jean Maglione, who has had two new kidneys placed in her body this week by a donor, and uh, for her well-being and in thanksgiving for the donor. And then among those who have died, I'm remembering Bill DeVito, as well as my friend uh, Joe Falgiano, Elaine and Jim Harmon, Norma Calabrese, all the members of the Emelo family, Richard Maglione, Judge Anthony Falango, whose vestment I wear today, Emily LaFasso, Tom Miller and John Slade. I pray for Chris Baumler, as well as Gussie Sino and Michael Manzella and Chrissy Formato. I pray for Dr. Shari Simone, wonderful doctor who did so much good for others. For Betty McCaffrey and Gina Pelletier, for B. Ferrari, for James and Robbie Pure, for Michael Joseph Connolly, my classmate from college who passed. I remember this week especially, today in fact she was buried, Marilyn Arbogast, a wonderful mom who passed away in Florida, as well as uh, Kevin Bayon and Mary O'Brien Kelly. Among those who have Passed away, I remember Kathy O'Hara, I pray for Elaine Sedita, I pray for Ralph Woythaler, John Slade, Joe Cooney, Mary Glander, pray for Corinne Caracciola, and for Jerry and Marie Taylor. And among those who have died, let me please add some that just uh, were given to me this week. I pray for Anthony Barone, and Anthony Toro, and Jared, Gerard Granito. I want to, if I can, uh, remember to pray for all of our men and women in the armed forces and their well-being and safety. I pray for our first responders, police, firefighters, and EMTs, our doctors, nurses, orderlies who keep us healthy, our teachers who teach the young, hopefully, values that last. I pray for an increase in vocations to the priesthood and religious life that 
good and holy people will come to serve the needs of all. I pray for the pray for the well-being of our church that we will return to being all that Christ wants us to be, lovers of God and lovers of one another. With all that in mind, would you join me, please, in praying the prayer we say to honor the Mother of God, our patroness. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. By the mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sac sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity. Cleanse me from all of my sin. Pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice will be found acceptable to God, our Heavenly Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands to the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his church. God of tenderness and mercy, may we offer you today a pure sacrifice for the forgiveness of all our sins. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. Father, it is our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks and praise for Jesus Christ, our Savior and our brother. He is the word through whom you made the universe. He is the Savior you sent to redeem us. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh and was born of the Blessed Virgin Mary. For our sake, he opened his arms on the cross. He put an end to death and revealed the resurrection. In this, he fulfilled your will, and he won for you a holy people. So now, with all the angels and saints in heaven, we proclaim your glory as together we pray. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed. You are the fount of all holiness. Let your spirit come upon these gifts of bread and wine to make them holy so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. Before he was given up to death, a death which he freely accepted out of love for us, Jesus took bread in his sacred hands and gave you, Father, thanks and praise. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. When supper was ended, Jesus took a chalice filled with the fruit of the vine. Again, Father, he thanked you for your goodness, gave the chalice to his disciples and friends, and said, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of our faith, Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection 
you have set us free. In memory of Jesus' death and resurrection, we offer you, Father, this life-giving bread, this saving chalice, and we thank you for counting us as worthy to be in your presence and to minister to you. Humbly, we pray that by partaking in the body and blood of Christ, we may all be united as one family through the power of the Holy Spirit. Lord, remember your church spread throughout the world and make us grow in love together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, along with all the bishops, the clergy, the religious, and all of God's people. We ask you to bless and remember all of our brothers and sisters who've gone to their rest in the hope of rising again. Bring them and all the departed into the light of your presence. Have mercy on us all and make us worthy to share eternal life with Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her devoted spouse, and with all the saints and martyrs and angels who've done your will throughout the ages. May we praise you in union with them and give you glory through your Son and our brother, Jesus Christ the Lord. Through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. Loving God, loving your neighbor as yourself. It's very simple and yet so hard to live fully every day. For the grace to do that in your life and mine, let's pray the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from all anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you my peace, my peace I give to you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom where you live and reign, one God forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Lord Jesus Christ, with faith in your love and mercy, we eat your body and drink your blood. Let it not bring us condemnation, but health in mind and in body. My friends, behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ bring us all to share in everlasting life. Please join me in praying our spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. 
I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Just a couple of announcements. One would be to thank some of you who have uh, written to me this past week and have contributed to us being able to help families in need at Thanksgiving. Uh, I appreciate your generosity to our parish outreach so that literally hundreds of families in the area can have a Thanksgiving worth remembering. So thank you for your generosity. And for those of you who still want to, just uh, mail it what you can to Our Lady of Lourdes and we'll make sure it's used for groceries and food for those who are having hard times and might not be able to provide a, a blessed Thanksgiving. And then I wanted to mention too and ask for your prayers for our friend, Father Kevin Thompson, who so often uh, manages the editing of these masses, who was taken ill this past week and is over at uh, Mercy Hospital. Keep him in your prayers so he can return to full good health. Um, I also wanted to mention, as I always do, that you're very, very welcome to join us on personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti by going to either Sirius XM, the Catholic channel on Sundays, or just by going to your computer and in the heading, punch in personally speaking with Monsignor Jim Lasanti on YouTube. This week, our guest is Senator Mike Rounds, United States Senator from South Dakota, a Catholic man, a gentleman who has raised up a great family and grandchildren, who has loved his wife, Jean, for many years, went to God two years ago and talks about his faith and how it has sustained him. And I also want to mention that next week, our guest is Max Boot, who's a historian and has written in some ways the definitive biography of President Ronald Reagan. Very interesting interview with a man to help us talk about our president, who many of us remember and admire. So next week is Max Boot, the historian who wrote the book Reagan, and this week is Senator the Mike Rounds. Be with us on Personally Speaking, and uh, now let's continue to pray. Lord God, you give us new hope through this gift of the Holy Eucharist. May the power of your divine love Continue its saving work among us and bring us one day to the joys you promise in the kingdom of heaven. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. My friends, the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you and your families in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace. Thanks be to God. the break of the day.